old logger's path. There's another orange blaze. We'll just stay on the orange for the next three days. Get a tarp up, get a hammock up, relax, enjoy myself. Try to pick a route that's not too deep, which unfortunately I think I may have picked one that kind of is. Oh, some cold water. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here. It is mid-May, about midday, and I am itching to do some backpacking. So I'm gonna get out of the vehicle and outside in general, Let's take the keys out, and do a little backpacking and hammock camping trip. I'm gonna do three days, two nights, solo. I got my backpack over there, and just looking forward to getting out in the woods. You can see it's a beautiful day so far. I'm in north central Pennsylvania, and I'm about to do something called the Old Loggers Path. It's been on my radar for a couple of years now. Whoa, as <laughs> my backpack tries to escape the car. Luckily, as you can see, I got a light load here. I'm going with the Gregory Optic. Um, I'm a little over 10 pounds, so I guess technically for you purists, I'm not ultra light, but I also don't really care. Because it is mid-May, uh, shoulder season, I got some extra layers in there and some warmth, some gloves and hats and stuff like that. Um, and my hammock and my cook sets about to pop out after the fall there. But yeah, I'm gonna pack away the keys and get on the trail. My last trip was up, my last solo trip at least, was up in New Hampshire. It was pretty intense, snowshoeing, lots of miles, crazy weather and, a ton of elevation gain. It was pretty brutal. So my goal for this trip is the complete opposite. I'm going to see some nice waterfalls, some babbling brooks, just kind of soak in the trails and the trees and spend three days just relaxing. This is about a 27 mile loop or so. I think I'm probably going to do seven today because it is uh, midday. Like I said, it's about noon. It's probably seven today and then the following days, maybe 10 miles a piece. Only about 1500 feet of elevation gain per day which is pretty chill um, and yeah, it should be nice. So reset my temperature. Uh, it's wow, 75. I think that's from inside the car. Uh, look like the outside temps around 60. Like I said, I have those extra layers in there because it still might go down to around 38, maybe even 35 tonight. Uh, speaking of which, I pulled a mic, AKA trail slipper. My friend many years ago forgot his boots. I got my fancy blue shoes here that I had on for driving. And yes, I did forget my Cortex Trail Runners. They are not there. So I guess my fancy blue shoes are gonna get pretty dirty on this trip. But they're nice and light and they do match my shirt. So I got that going on. All right, let's uh, get into it. See how this goes. Oh yeah, that feels a lot better than my winter loadout did. Gotta adjust the straps on this. I don't think I've worn this pack in a little while. All right, so here's the information board over here. And then in my pocket, I got my GPS loaded up with my info. Open fires prohibited March 1st through May 25th. Today's the 20th, by the way, starting on a Wednesday, coming out Friday afternoon. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, all the reservable campsites are closed. Might have something to do with COVID, I guess. I'm not sure, but backpacking is still open, which is good for me. And I don't believe I need a permit for that. So we're good. And attention, old loggers, path hikers, extensive damage along a uh, long run section of Old Longer's Path. It's been rerouted. Yeah, um, there was some pretty extensive washout in these parts uh, due to a storm many years ago, or I think several years ago at least at this point, and washed out some bridges and roads and all kinds of damage. Um, the bridge is apparently fixed because I was able to get here. Um, but I'm sure as we go, we'll probably see 
some remnants of that damage, which could be interesting. But over there, you can see the campsites they're talking about. The actual established campsites, car camping kind of deal. But from looking at my GPS, I'm headed uh, down this way, link up with the road and the guardrail up here. And then I will be able to hop on. Like I said, I have a choice of going clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm gonna go counterclockwise because of that mileage issue. The camping area, which is Rock Run, is where I'm headed for. I think that's a pretty beautiful spot. So on a weekend like Saturday, Sunday, or even Friday night, probably a good chance it's gonna be taken. So I'm just gonna gamble on whether or not I get it tonight. Now there were some cars down in the lot, but we'll see. I should not be crossing that bridge to do counterclockwise. I should be doubling back this way. There's another orange blaze. And that should be the theme of the trip. Just following those bad boys. Now that we're headed in the right direction, we'll just stay on the orange for the next three days and see what happens. And for now we're on this road, but we'll break off of it soon. And so the uphill begins. Not too uh, intense. First starting out a hike. Everything seems a little bit harder until you kind of adapt and break in and <laughs> Your body quits whining and admits this is what we're doing for a few days. So, there will be many up and downs along the way. But sometimes the first one feels the toughest. And right here is actually a pretty good example. You can see how the path is raised up here. The trail path, hence the old loggers path name back in the early 1900s, right at the turn of the century, basically. All this land around here, which is now Loyal Sock State Forest, it was originally owned by a tanning company, you know, like tanning, leather hides, that sort of thing. I believe it was actually the union tanning company that they were called and they needed hemlock which we're going to see as we go along the loop right now we got these hardwoods but hemlock is more of a, a coniferous tree and apparently they used that to uh, darken the hides so they acquired this land and started using it for that and then they also sold some hardwoods out of here and then eventually around, I want to say 1915, 1917, something like that, a lumber mill either acquired it or got involved and logged it extensively, like many of the areas around here in Pennsylvania. In fact, I talked about that a bit on my Loyal Sock Link Trail, which is only about 10 miles as the crow flies from here. So similar kind of situation it really got logged to death and that's why most of this is newer growth smaller trees that we'll see as we go but anyway <laughs> the point of my little uh, spiel there was that the majority of what we're going to be walking on these few days are old either logging roads or railroad grades I don't know if you can hear it, but that's the water down to my side there. It really kind of drops off. You can see the shale rock there that we're cruising along. So it's quite nice and peaceful. Easy grade. Nice little flowers here and there. Come to a gate here. Now there are a couple times where this loop trail etc comes across some roads 
and by road I just mean I guess technically it's a forest service road I'm gonna go straight on the OLP and from looking at my topo map I believe we uh, cross a stream in maybe another mile or so mile and a half something like that here's our orange blazes again and I think we follow this road technically for a little bit and then we'll get back into the woods. Cool thing about this trail too, they actually paint arrows for you to make it super easy. On my Loyal Sock Link trail, I went into kind of details about the whole double blaze thing and how if, if there's two blazes, it means watch out. If there's the two blazes, but one's offset, it usually means turn. Um, but in this case, they take the guesswork out and they've been doing actual arrows, which is, Good for them. Takes a little work, extra work for the trail maintenance crew, but it's nice. Water in general seems pretty reasonable on this trip. You don't have to load up too hard. You seem to come across it uh, fairly often from what I can see from the maps and trip reports I've found. Pretty beautiful spot. Water running here. Temperature's nice. And uh, not only is the water here, 72 degrees. Not only is there water here, but there's a little campsite over there we can check out in a minute. But I'm gonna fill up some water for my bee free filter. Well, actually, I'm going to cook this water, so I don't really need to worry about that. So I got my cook kit. Did an alcohol stove this time. And my titanium pot. So, I'm going to fill this up. I'm, uh, I'm over four miles in now. I've been taking my time. It's like 2.30. Um, and probably only got about like two miles to go to get to the spot I really want to. Uh, the gamble that I'm taking though is there was like three or four cars in the parking lot. I haven't seen any day hikers retracing their way out so there's a good chance that those are backpackers as well. The spot I'm going to Rock Run is apparently one of the more beautiful spots to camp around here. Um, so that's my gamble. If I get there and there's people there, then I'll just keep moving. I will find somewhere to camp, but um, let me grab my pack and my water over there and get into a little something. Got a little rock chair right here and everything. Got my Dutchware folding sit pad, little half ounce foam guy. I can carry that. Ah, it just makes it a little more comfortable. This is a good spot. Got the sun out, some water flowing nearby. And now, out of my ultra fancy and expensive food bag here otherwise known as the grocery bag <laughs> let me show you what I'm coming up with I keep saying on these trips for a while now every time I go out I love packet gourmet the brand the company they're a um, family business that does dehydrated um, or I should say backpacking trail food and that's not what I'm looking for, but I always forget to order from them and I do these spontaneous trips. And then I'm lazy and I go to Walmart or something and I get Mountain House, which um, I do enjoy as well, but it's nowhere near the same. So this time I actually got a, a whole order of packet gourmet food um, that I bought and it showed up in time. Today I'm going to have some big easy Cajun gumbo soup. It's andouille spiced chicken, okra, tomatoes with all kinds of good stuff, long grain, Louisiana, Louisiana, rice, and Tabasco is in there as well, apparently. So these guys, their food I like because it tastes way more like real food than Mountain House. Although Mountain House lasts like 40 years. <laughs> That's the upside of that. But this, it tastes like you're eating some real stuff. I really like it. And it has been way too long. And I wish you could smell that. I don't know if you could see in there. But uh, there's some 
dehydrated okra and chicken and all kinds of good stuff. So I'm gonna have this for lunch. And looks like that's some turkey broth uh, concentrate and some tobacco, Tabasco sauce rather. And all that stuff in there. So what do I need? I'm just gonna add the broth concentrate and two cups of boiling water to the pouch and stir well. Close it, let it sit 15 minutes. I guess that's a good excuse for me to hang out by the water here. So two cups, 16 ounces. Well, I got a 750 ml pot. So about two thirds of my 750 pot should probably do it. So I'm gonna heat that up with my alcohol stove. And I've shown these before. I've got fancier ones, some cool ones that viewers have sent, which I appreciate, but I kind of brought this for nostalgic reasons. This little 59 cent can of cat food that I fed my cat whew, years and years ago. I think is approaching 10 years old. It's a quarter ounce. I pour a little denatured alcohol in there. I light it on fire and it heats up water. And that's about all you need. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, let's give this a shot. It's been 15 minutes, a little over. The bag still feels very hot because it's quite warm out here in the 70s. Like I said earlier, got the, <laughs> got the pants up and I got my side vents on the pants open. Feeling pretty good. It's kind of hard to believe it's gonna go down into the 30s tonight, but that's what they say. But one thing at a time, let's get into the gumbo. I have not tried this type before. It smells pretty phenomenal. I can smell a little smoke from the uh, sausage. It's still very hot. Mm. It's definitely hydrated well. And actually the corn is uh, has some little char marks on it. Roasted corn, nice. I think I actually have to let that cool down. But that is amazing. I usually don't do meals like this uh, midday. I'll do like a ramen noodle or something like that. But I figured with the pace of this trip, this would be well worth the uh, time. I'm gonna hang out here a little bit more. It's like 3.15 right now after letting that steep. So I'm just gonna relax, enjoy myself. And uh, maybe a little bit before four o'clock, I'll get back on the trail, two miles to go. And hopefully I'll find camp and I'll still have an hour or so of daylight. But one thing at a time, I'm gonna eat some gumbo. Well, I've been cruising along for a little bit now. We're slowly getting into more of a coniferous vibe. We're starting to creep into the hardwoods, which is what has been the majority of the hike so far. And we're also losing elevation. It was up to a max of about 2,100 feet. But at this point, the grade is kind of tapered off and I think it's going to be downhill from here on out. You can hear some water in the distance. You can maybe even see some peeking through down there. And we're just going to go downhill. Less muddy than I expected, which is <laughs> good for my, my uh, sneakers here. Which, to be honest, these don't have a lot more support than the Gore-Tex Adidas trail runners I was going to wear. The main advantage of those was just going to be keep my feet dry in mud 
So with the uh, 10 pound base weight and I don't know, maybe seven pounds max of food and water, I got well under 20 pounds on my back. So walking in sneakers is not a problem. Um, of course, that's a personal thing. If you hike less, you might not want to take that risk with your ankles. But for me, when you're in a lightweight backpacking setup like that, I find regular old sneakers are just fine. As long as you're not worried about getting them wet. Starting to look pretty cool. I think we're getting close. Oh, and look. Finally, a little mud to dodge. Still not nearly as bad as I expected, though, so. Just keep my eye out, drop down, maybe another 100 feet or so. Alright, I do believe this is it. Campsite target for night one. Confluence of Yellow Dog Run, that should be Yellow Dog Run right there. And then it kind of tees into Rock Run. Which now I guess the name is starting to make a little more sense. And I already see some obvious camping areas right there. I've heard that potentially on the other side of the water there are some spots. I don't see anybody yet. It's five o'clock. I said I've been taking my time. At this point, probably nobody else coming unless they're doing a late arrival and hiking faster than I, which is totally possible. Um, but it might be nice. I might scout on the other side just so that if somebody else comes, they can easily get this if they show up at night. And then also I can, you know, kind of have the spot to myself over there. But look at this. This is awesome. You see that? That is really cool. Beautiful pools of water. Just eroded. Now, it's not super wet right now, so I imagine this can get flowing even more impressively, but it looks pretty awesome. You got that boulder in the middle there. The layers of stone just beautiful so I'm gonna poke around now you can tell actually when it really gets going it comes down through there too but yeah I'm gonna poke around um, I'll drop the pack and just kind of explore and see if there's anything easily accessible on the other side here because um, based on that I think maybe if I could get over there There'd probably be some cool views over there as well. I just don't know how easy it is to hop over. And I'll tag this on my GPS data, which also shout out to Mid-Atlantic Hikes. I'll link them. That's who gave me a lot of the starting points for me researching this trip. Um, they have good GPS data. And then just to be redundant, I'm recording everything on my GPS as well. And I'll put a link in the description if you want to download my uh, data and notes and whatnot, but I'll tag this. But yeah, so actually, it looks like I can probably hop across right over here and get a little further away. Looks like something was maybe digging there. Oh, yeah, I think I can probably pull this off and take a look over there. All right, we're over. So let's see what we have. I don't see anything real obvious yet. So far, it actually looks like it's better over there. Let's keep going and see.
There's a little bit of a breeze over there, but it's probably cutting the bugs down, which is nice, which haven't been too bad yet, but there's potential. Oh, here we go. All right, this might be it. Nice fire pit there. <laughs> Somebody left a weird single grate. I don't know, it's good for one hot dog. Some trash that didn't burn, unfortunately. Let's see what's over here. This is on the water, which is nice. Fire pit. In the water. So, yeah, this looks pretty promising and looks like I'll have it to myself. So, I think the pack at five o'clock is finally coming off. Take that off. Send a message to my wife that this is where I'll be camping with this button on the spot. There we go. Turn the active tracking off. I'm just doing five minute breadcrumbs that you can look at on the app for a little peace of mind since there is no cell phone service here. But yeah, I'm gonna find the right pair of trees, get a tarp up, get a hammock up, and uh, <laughs> then it might be time to eat again, at least a, at least a snack, and then eventually some dinner. Nice. Actually, only a few feet away from where I was looking at that fire pit. It uh, looks pretty perfect. I got the water over there. I do have some bugs around, but the temperature is dropping, which is good. I think they'll get knocked down soon. Down to 68, so it's going down. In fact, I'll probably, now that I'm not moving too, close the zippers on my side vents. i to keep some heat in. Paint right back down. Feels better already. Um, decent breeze through here, which is nice. Two trees right here. So I'm just going to put my hammock up right there and then tarp over top. Um, there is a threat of rain on this trip, but I don't think it's tonight. I have no real way of knowing that. Uh, sometimes I bring a weather van radio. I did not this time, uh, just because I didn't think it was that critical. I was trying to save a little weight and um, no cell service. So. It is what it is, but I think either late tomorrow and almost certainly on the third day I'm going to get rained on. But luckily I do have rain gear for that, some new uh, really ultralight gear. But I'm not worried about that right now. First things first, I'm going to get shelter up. So I got Kudu fiber tarp this time, or Dyneema fiber is what it's called now. Little five ounce tarp, ultra light, not cheap, but I've had this for quite a long time and it has held up nice. It's paid for itself over the years for sure. And then I got a little 10 ounce hammock. There's my hammock. So that's it. Dutchware, half wet hammock. I've showed this on a lot of uh, videos. It's very minimal. Just has a bug net that goes over my kind of chest area, keep the bugs off of my face and works pretty well. And I went, again, to save some weight to balance out my extra layers for when it gets cold tonight. Uh, whoopee hook system. So, a little slower and some would say tedious to set up, but the suspension is only, like, for a pair of them, like three ounces a piece. So, the whole system is well under a pound. And I'm going to throw it up on the tree. These are Kevlar straps. Again, a little high. Uh, not the cheapest thing but an investment I made years ago and they're super lightweight and really strong so that allows me to get nice and tight up to the tree and then the whoopee hook I can just kind of use that to slide this loop back and forth and that adjusts the distance between the trees and I'll have a hammock set up in no time.
All right, hammock is up. Got my underquilt on. That'll insulate the bottom of me. Hangs underneath so it doesn't get compressed. Keeps me nice and warm. This is actually uh, my newest underquilt. It is by Simply Light Designs. I showed it a couple videos ago, but it's the uh, Trail Winder. It's synthetic, which usually compared to down, synthetic is heavier, but it's also um, better in wet conditions, which I may be getting on this trip. But the cool thing about this is it's cut on an angle. So you can see there's this fabric here and that's actually water resistant. It's actually an underquilt protector on the outside. So if I get any rain coming down and bouncing, it'll shed it off. But inside there is a layer of insulation, but if you can tell here, it's only cut in a rectangular kind of going on an angle because in a hammock, you get a flat lay by laying on an angle. So if you know which way you like to lay, and you can pick either left or right lay for your feet. Uh, in my case, it doesn't really matter to me, but I just make sure my feet are on the appropriate side, my head's on the other side, and I stay nice and warm. The insulation is right up against me, and it doesn't go anywhere at night. It stays right where it should. I've got some little um, adjustment cords here, but I dialed it in for this hammock, and it works really good. So. I'm really digging that. It's like a 30 or 40 degree model. So I'm right at the uh, kind of borderline of uh, the temperatures I'll be seeing. I should be fine. And my top quilt right here, which is basically just a down blanket, really, sleeping bag without a zipper or a hood, is my hammock gear that I've had forever. That's a 40 degree. So I'll pop that in there and let that start lofting up. I always like to get this stuff out a little early just so I can loft up a bit. Put the bag away so I don't lose it in the morning. But there you go, I'm all set up. So I can lounge in that, hang out, put the tarp up in a little bit, but probably need to maybe level it out a little bit. But for lounging, I'll be good. Before I go to bed, maybe I'll raise that end a little bit. But that looks pretty good, so. Feeling pretty good about this. Temp is continuing to drop. The bugs are getting less and less. And um, I think I'm just gonna hang by the water, maybe have a snack, and start cooking an early dinner or two. <laughs> I didn't eat much. Uh, during all that hiking I did today. It wasn't too strenuous, but I, I built up a bit of an appetite, so. Listen to the wildlife around me. Saw a uh, bear run across the road as I was driving in. Pretty decent size. Uh, that was cool. So, I don't know. Maybe if I'm quiet, I'll see a bear or something. But that's about it. I'll get my cook set out, stare at the trees, and let time go by. Good morning, everyone. This is out of the way here. Ah, it was a little chilly out here on my face. I'll have to check what the temperature was. The low was, I should say. We're probably at it around now. It's 6.30. 
and I am pretty good and awake so I think I'm gonna get up slept great in the uh, Dutch wear hammock and the trail winder combo that under quilt works pretty well for me I get a comfortable lay in that oh, I have to get the pants back on I got those hanging down there right now I just got my Outdoor Vitals um, new thermals I got from them what I like about them is uh, their combination is synthetic and merino wool but what I like is the most is they have the zipper on here so I can actually take them off later on the trail without taking off my boots or shoes which means I can keep them on for the beginning of the day because it feels pretty cold but I'll shed them once I get moving um, I might have breakfast on the trail I think I'll do that routine but first things first get my shoes on which I finally got wet last night uh, doing chores or I should say just retrieving some more water and I stepped right into some water by the stream while I was doing that got too close to the edge of the water and just kind of stepped in with both feet so that'll feel nice to put those on I got my other socks over there I had some dry socks to put on that kept me warm uh, I'm supposed to be at night for sleeping but yep, there is my soaking wet <laughs> 30 something degree shoes alright Sure, these wet socks are gonna feel glorious as well. Oh, these socks are merino wool too, too, these right socks. You got two layers in there, which should help with blisters, or at least I've never had blister issues with them, so I guess it works. But more importantly, merino wool should work pretty well when it's wet, for keeping me uh, warm when I need to be warm. And cool later on when I want to be cool. Uh, magical little substance, Merino wool. Actually, this doesn't feel too terrible. And the nice thing is, once I start moving around, these really thin uh, running shoes basically should dry out pretty quick. I hope. <laughs> oh, let's get the day started. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful water. <sighs> Rock formations down there. You can see I got the tarp fully deployed. Did that a little before bed. And I put down all the corners and, or I should say, you always put the corners down, but I also put my side pull out. And the wind was going pretty good last night, considering that I was on some, some thinner trees. Um, it was definitely rocking me a little bit. I think they had some decent winds. Sounded like and felt like occasionally. Oh boy, it's 32. The low, yeah, we just had it, was 31.6. So, no wonder I got a little chilly on the face there. But surprisingly, I... Um, did good sleeping. Uh, like I said, I don't remember if this is rated to 30 degrees or 40. Um, but I know it's not like a full-on winter quilt. But it worked fine. This hammock gear is actually rated for 40. So I pushed that 10 degrees past its capability. But I've kind of had luck with them doing that before with all their stuff. So I pushed it to the limit on the temperature. That is for sure. But no rain, not yet, which is good. Whew, especially when it's below freezing like it is now. <sighs> okay. I do believe it's coffee time. <sighs> All right. Nice hot cup of coffee. Sun's starting to poke out above the trees there, which is nice. It'll warm things up, along with this coffee, of course. And to keep me warm, I'm actually using my rain gear as an extra layer to trap some heat, which works really good. Um, I usually, when the weather's borderline like this, 
will at least always carry um, a top hard shell, even if there's no rain expected for just that, either a windbreaker during high winds or cold mornings like this. And in my case, it was so cold this morning that I put on the pants too, which is helping. So this is the new gear I got. Outdoor Research actually sent me this to give it a try. It's the Helium line, but I believe it's the newest iteration from them. I think it's like Gen 3 or something. But they're very minimal, but super lightweight, which is what I like, especially when I don't know if I'm really going to need them. Uh, <clears throat> they're both like under six ounces a piece. Uh, so for pants and jacket, I'm uh, 12 ounces or actually a little less, I think, something like that. So that's nice. Um, like I said, they are really minimal. So there's no side pockets on the jacket or the pants. Um, they have other stuff if you want to take the weight penalty. But I guess to save weight, they really trimmed a lot of that out. Well, actually, the pants do have side zips on them still. So I can get them on and off pretty easily without removing my shoes, which is cool. But I do have a little vest pocket, which is nice for keeping anything I need, like a lighter or something while I'm cooking. Which also reminds me of something else. This morning, I was wondering, kind of thinking that it looked like I was going through my fuel uh, for my alcohol stove a little quicker than expected. And then it dawned on me that I was showing you the wrong way to use that cat can stove the whole time last night. I have not used that stove in quite a while. And I was putting it underneath the windshield screen and then sitting the cup on top, which is how I use um, Esbit stoves, right? Which is like a cubed fuel. But I totally forgot that the whole point of this cat can set up with the holes punched in the side is to put it directly on it. And it forms a seal there and you get like a little vacuum going and then the jets come through the uh, sides. So I think I proved to myself yesterday, based on how much fuel I have left, that that definitely makes a difference in terms of efficiency because I was taking a lot longer to get a boil and stuff by having that gap in between there. But I'll just use it properly for the rest of the trip. And I brought a little extra fuel, so I should be fine. But I'm gonna sit and enjoy my coffee, stare at this flowing water a little longer, and then I'll slowly pack up, get on the trail at a semi-decent time, for me at least. So, the uphill begins, but the sun's out, feeling good, a pretty cool waterfall down there, I don't think the trail actually goes right up to it, it's kind of hard to see through the trees there, but sounds like a pretty decent one, oh yeah, there we go. kind of hidden behind the trees. It's pretty cool though. Kind of funny. This culvert here, which is basically just a tube in the ground to divert water underneath of a trail or a roadway. <laughs> Seems a little overwhelmed at this point, doesn't it? I barely even noticed it. But it, at one point, I guess it was directing water under the trail, but it's been overrun now. 
They look so old and beat up. I might even be suspect to say that it's uh, 80 plus years old. Just a guess, but it's possible. See, back in the 1930s, the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, uh, set up by Roosevelt to kind of combat the Depression and give jobs to people who needed them. Some would say it was kind of busy work, but what it created was a lot of the trail systems that we have to this day in national parks and state parks and everything. So this uh, Loyal Sock State Forest here was eventually, uh, they purchased from those loggers and tanneries and whatnot, mostly loggers at that point that I was talking about earlier. They purchased this land from them and turned it into the public land that it is now. Uh, sometime, I guess a little before, but by the 1930s, the CCC came in here as they did a lot of other places and did some work. So, I don't know, they just kind of caught my eye and looks pretty old. Who knows? Maybe some 18 year old or 20 year old kid put that in way back in 1933 or something. You never know. All right, I'm a little under two miles into my journey today. And this forest road here must be Yellow Dog Road, which I was anticipating. And we're just gonna coincide with this for a little bit. And then I'll branch off to the left, I believe, back into the woods. But hey, it's a little downhill and it's flat as all can be. Uh, usually walking on dirt roads uh, can be a little boring compared to being in the woods, but sometimes it's a nice break. And I guess that's what this will be until I get back into those woods. It's been about a mile, mile and a half later. Far away from the road now, that's for sure. I've come across some water. It is 10.57, which was kind of my latest point for eating my breakfast brunch. But, according to my map and notes, up ahead here, eh, maybe three quarters of a mile or so, on a pretty flat grade, is Doe Run, which is another decent body of water. And apparently there's a new shelter, at least within the last handful of years, aptly named Doe Run Shelter. And water, of course. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna push on another three quarters of a mile or so. And maybe we'll check out that shelter see how it looks might be nice to set up a little base of operations get some food in me finally well certainly does look like some new wood compared to the shelters I've seen before here it is Dare run shelter Right there. Look, you even got the stickers still on the wood. But, okay. A little fire starter. Some sort of weird battery. Tape. K tape. A candle. tarp, a little log book back there, somebody even left a pot, I'm scared to open, a burnt pot, but pot nonetheless if you need one, alright, 
Well, I think I'm going to set up here. I can take a look through my lunch options, breakfast, whatever it is. So, what do we got? Look, I can even kick my feet up here. This is nice. And sunshine bowl it's going to be. Looking forward to that. Also, in the meantime, I think I'll probably take off these long johns finally, which is easy enough. Like I said before, they got the zipper on them, so it zips all the way up to the leg, or to the hip, I should say, on each side. And now they're completely open and off of me. And I'm done. Shoes didn't have to come off. <sighs> so I got a little sunshine. Some terrible hair that I haven't had cut because I can't during the whole COVID <laughs> shutdown. But I guess that's why I'll put my hat back on for that. And uh, what was I doing? Cooking some food. All right, let's use this properly. Put it right on there, full contact. And just use the windscreen to block what is apparently a bunch of wind coming from over there. Much better. It should be a lot more fuel efficient. Oats, quinoa, mango, almonds, pecans, chia, hemp hearts, coconut, maple syrup. All right, getting me hungry. Got some water, I'll hydrate with that. I'm actually, have been using the little Mio packets, or I mean uh, bottles for electrolytes and energy and stuff, but I ran out. But I do have, from an old MRE, <laughs> Some carbohydrate electrolyte. Oh no, this is the fake Gatorade one. Yeah, if I remember correctly, that one was a little rough. I don't know if I had an old one before, but it had a little bit of that <laughs> uh, chalky taste to it. But eh, I'll try it. I, I do need electrolytes, so there's my military issued beverage that I'll have with my lunch. Shelter was nice to cook in, but it's a little shaded, so out here in the sun's a little nicer. Let's get into this. This has been sitting for over 10 minutes now as I've been just kind of filling up some water and relaxing. Last time I had this was Colorado with my wife, Mike and Danielle. I'm going to see chunks of coconut already. Mmm. Mmm. A little sweetness. Sweetness from the cranberry. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. This weather is beautiful today. Haven't gotten an update on the weather. Because I really can't. But, um... I think today is going to be fine, so maybe it, maybe it is really just going to be tomorrow that I get rained on. Hopefully not at all, but I'm prepared if I do. Try out my military electrolyte orange drink. <laughs> About how I remember it. A little bit of a a little chalky aftertaste, but I guess that's the extra uh, electrolytes and whatnot they put in there. But that's okay, I could use that. Um, although I really haven't been sweating too hard. Because the temps have been pretty low. Although it's warming up now. But not bad at all, and the terrain's not too crazy. So, I'm digging it. Soak in the sun. Eat some food.
definitely not a logging road anymore, that's for sure. I know those windmills. When we drive up to the cabin, we turn off, headed towards Wellsboro, we get off near Liberty. And we always see those windmills. I was wondering if this uh, trail went across the path of them, but it looks like, looks like maybe not. But pretty close. Kind of cool. There's a bird in the distance there. Pretty big one. Can't really identify from here, but he's enjoying himself soaring around there. Not bad, and that sun is out. Oh wow, and those wind turbines go for miles down there. Here's some wind ahead. I'm guessing it opens up even more. Let's see what's in store here. And that wind is picking up. But this here is the summit of Sullivan Mountain. And we're gonna kind of be on the ridge on top of it for a little bit across some different vistas and whatnot on these rock ledges. And apparently there will be some campsites available. Now, if I see anything up here, Hence the little fire pit right there. I'm not going to take it because I want water. So I still have to go uh, at least another couple miles. Let me check what my mileage is up to. Eight and a half miles. So I'd say within a mile to a mile and a half, two miles maximum, I'll find some camp. Well, it would be really cool to be up here with a view. Um, I need water. So... I'm gonna kind of prioritize that because I need to drink water and I need water to cook my meals and whatnot. Always weird to come and find an opening like this when you've been in the woods for such a long time. Of course I had the little view up top but I dipped down and now I'm back where I was back in the woods I came out to this, but I was about to say I believe it's a pipeline, and that's what this says here, I think. Warning, petroleum pipeline. So that's what this is here. You can see down across the valley there, and within a little bit, hopefully, find some water in a camp. As you can see, I'm all set up. I've been lounging for a little bit, listening to an audiobook, and just relaxing. Temperature is 65, so it's going back down. Time is 6.40, so now that I did my little siesta, I should probably move on to the next meal which is the chili. Let's check that out. 
I'm pretty excited about this. Back in January, so a handful of months ago, I went down and hung out with Ricky, who if you haven't seen that video, it's a pretty awesome story. Well, it's pretty unfortunate what happened to him originally, but basically he got uh, pancreatic cancer which is unfortunate of course, but he's been kicking its butt. And I went down and hiked with him and he's still fighting a good fight. And while we were down there, he made, he's much more ambitious than me, he does his own dehydrated food for backpacking. And on that trip, he made some chili that we didn't get to because I made some grilled cheese and we did a hot tent and we were feeding wood into the stove. Uh, all night and hanging out with him and his dad and his friend friends I should say and uh, it was a good time but I put this in the freezer and now I'm finally gonna break it back out so this is Ricky's chili right here I don't know if he usually puts it in a pot to rehydrate it or not I um, brought a little food saver bag or I should say a uh, cooking bag I was going to put it in to rehydrate it with boiling water but I'm thinking I got nothing else to do so I'm probably just going to put it in a pot with some water and try to slowly simmer it which with an alcohol stove is um, pushing it a little bit but it'll just give me something to do for I don't know 20 minutes or so let's see what he's got going on so we got red beans, beef, all the good stuff. Pour it in the pot here. He did tell me in a text message to make sure to add plenty of water. The only thing I'm wishing right now is that I had some cheese and sour cream for this. That would be nice. It smells like chili already, actually. Okay, I'm getting hungry. It's more of the denatured alcohol in there. Just from the hardware store. If you're not familiar with alcohol stoves, that's all this really is. Right through the side port. Yep, that works. Let's see if we can't come up with some chili. Definitely hot, temperature. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Get some good real pieces of beef in there. That is awesome. So, I'm gonna enjoy this. Thank you, Ricky, for uh, making this the first time. But I finally got to it, buddy. And it tastes pretty darn good. I got another hour or so until it gets dark, but this will probably be it for me. Get in the hammock, relax, as far as today goes, I think that's a wrap for now. <sighs> Good morning once again, everyone much warmer this morning oh. 53 degrees actually which is great the only downside to that is the uh, um, bugs I've already had a couple what looked like mosquitoes buzz by me as I was waking up I do have a little bit of bug spray in my um, backpack just a little vial of DEET 100% DEET Nice and lightweight that I may have to use today. But at least it's not freezing like yesterday. So it is like eh, six o'clock and still have not gotten any rain, which is awesome. But I'm not gonna take my chances. I'll get, um, I think I'm gonna get packed up quicker this morning. I'm excited, got 10 more miles. Uh, to see what this trail has to offer me today 
and there may or may not be rain so I'm just gonna go ahead pack up um, and just get back out there and then if it does start raining I already have my pack and my pack cover and my rain gear on and I won't be trying to break down in the rain which isn't that fun so that's what I'm gonna do get packed up get my food bag down back on the trail Fresh one there. Well, that came down pretty recently. Nice little archway. But we're back on the trail now. Yeah, it took about an hour to get out of camp, so I left by seven. And looking at my trail notes and GPS, looks like I actually stopped couple miles short of where I originally thought I might go to there I had two options I went to the shorter one so today might actually be 12 hours I uh, pardon me 12 miles instead of 10 or something like that but I got plenty of time because sunsets not until 8 granted I have to drive home but I should be there well before that I'm just kind of taking my time I'm watching the footing a bit. It's pretty, pretty rocky in these old drainages that I'm walking in. But the trails are still well blazed, and it's nice. And so is that temperature too. went to I'm two miles in now so if I kept going this is the site I had tagged I think I originally had this tagged because it was going to be my night one spot um, and I read it was nice it does look real nice although you definitely can see some remnants of some serious flooding and washouts and if you remember at the beginning of the video I said that kind of messed up a lot of things around here roads and parking areas and stuff and I said it was a handful of years ago that occurred but it was actually more like 10 years ago and if you are a follower of this channel you probably know what I'm going to say next what changed this area and these trails a bit 10 years ago good old Hurricane Irene yes once again no matter where I go from Pennsylvania to New Hampshire to Vermont that was a storm that really did some damage to the East Coast. And uh, most of the places I go have some sort of some sort of history or changes. You can see a lot of washout here and we'll probably see some more as we go. I also gotta figure out where to cross this thing. Doesn't look too promising compared to my other crossings. This is definitely the biggest one. So I'm gonna figure this out. Maybe uh, I'm definitely getting the feet wet again, I guess. But maybe this will wash the mud off. We'll see. But this might be my best bet. It's actually flowing pretty good and the rocks are slippery, so I'm just gonna go nice and slow so I don't dump my pack and try to pick a route that's not too deep, which unfortunately I think I may have picked one that kind of is. But, getting there, I was originally thinking of going over those rocks, but I don't think that looks so good. I'm going to stay over here. Ooh, this current is moving more than it looks like. Ooh, some cold water, which reminds me, I need to have some coffee still. Maybe I'll stop and do that after this. Whew. Oh, it's cold. All right. Made it. Maybe I'll leave this stick for somebody else. 
and technically the trail's right across up here. So I'll just make my way carefully up all this loose scree. My next challenge. Yeah, this place is beat up. <sighs> all right. Nice. Made it. Whew. All right, time for a little coffee break. I have just enough fuel left for one more meal, which is going to be my uh, sausage polenta at some point. I haven't eaten yet. It's about 8.13. I'm going to keep going. But because I'm saving that, I'm going to kick it old school iced coffee and I had some Jiva coffee, which I like, but I, I ran out of that. I used my last packet yesterday. So, once again, leftover MRE stuff. I got some spray-dried instant type 2 coffee. Add to six ounces of water. I'm going to stretch that a little bit for hydration's sake. So, I often do this though. Especially if I'm on the trail just moving and I'd like a little caffeine hit. Take powdered instant coffee, freeze-dried coffee, that type of thing. Add it to some cold water, and I always carry some sort of drink bottle like this that I can add coffee or electrolytes to. Ice coffee, not bad. All right, keep on walking here through the floodplain, back in the woods. Kind of getting out on this ridge though. It's nice. A little bit of haze out there. Well, my narrow trail popped out onto another dirt road, gravel road. That didn't surprise me too much. But what did was up here on what I believe is my expected view might be something could uh it's not exactly rugged but it's definitely going to make breakfast a little more comfortable wow that's pretty cool I'll take it. Little bench, little view. <sighs> Old Pennsylvania. And I am ready for something to eat. One heck of a breakfast view up there, that is for sure. Hung around for a little bit, dropped some elevation afterwards, and now I'm on this really nice level grade and no rocks. Had a lot of steep, rocky downhill for a good half mile section or so at least. I'm so I'm a little intense. For the most part, this trail is mostly chill areas like this but you have these interspersements little sections where they um, kind of pour the elevation and the rockiness on just to keep you on your toes but for the most part compared to somewhere like new hampshire or adirondacks or something it's pretty chilly you get a lot of opportunities to just walk on dirt which is always nice and comfortable so i had my breakfast now next thing you know we're pushing up on midday and I am totally out of, well, I'm completely out of hot food. I'm pretty much out of food. To be totally honest, I do have 
a bag of trail mix left, but I'm about sick of eating that. So hopefully I um, get out at a decent time so I can get a nice hot meal after this before the ride home. Of course, with the quarantine of 2020 going on, uh, I won't be able to sit down and do anywhere to have a nice burger as is my custom, but that's okay. I'm not above a takeout window fast food burger. Um, a lot of times that's what I do. It's just uh, Wendy's or McDonald's for my post hike burger. And other times I do fancy ones that viewers recommend, but considering the state of affairs, I think that's how it's gonna be. I'm gonna be eating my dinner in the car. But it's all part of the experience. I'm starting to hear some water again. saying about periodic bursts of elevation gain and loss oh that's what we've been doing for a while now maybe the last hour <sighs> but finally back up to 2100 feet or so elevation which seems to be kind of the top out point for around here and then you drop back down into the uh, low thousands or so so i'm back up on the top end of that range the trail goes over here, but we're supposed to be pretty much, this will be our, our last uh, vista. And um, there's also a Sprout Point shelter apparently too. Probably constructed around the same time as that Doe Run one we saw yesterday, which is very nice. Speaking of shelters, you can tell it's gotten overcast today, but it is not, <laughs> I shouldn't jinx it. It has not opened up on me rain-wise. And if it does at this point, I'm in the final handful of miles. It is what it is, but, yep. Sprout Run Shelter, very similar to the other one. Less random accoutrements left behind in it, which is fine with me. I'm gonna poke around and see where this view is. Oh, nice. And we are within, geez, less than 100 yards of the shelter. There's a separate little fire pit out here. Some rock chairs, a nice clearing, and just open view. Wow. Kind of wished I'd stayed here last night. Now, <laughs> that's not true. I wouldn't have gotten here. That'd be kind of ridiculous if I did. But coming from the other direction, if you don't want to do some short miles on the first day, if you did it the opposite um, rotation that I did. I think I would have to highly recommend this uh, on the grounds that it's either midweek because you're like me and you want to be alone or if you're social and looking for like-minded hiker friends to share the shelter with I guess come here on a weekend in peak season but I think I could have pulled it off last night I, I bet you nobody was here potentially the people I ran across today but this is awesome. I mean, you got the shelter right back there. I usually don't do shelters, like I said, because I'm a little <laughs> uptight and I like to know that nobody's just going to show up in my space. Um, if they did, that's fine. I mean, that's the whole point of using a shelter. I'm not going to be a jerk about it, but that's why I usually don't take that risk. It's not typically my personality. But on the occasions that I've used shelters, because I knew that it was basically off season and nobody else was around, it is really convenient throw a sleeping pad down you could walk right over here <laughs> don't walk past this of course and look at that beautiful view and like I said it's overcast right now but that would be pretty awesome if the uh, cloud cover was low and the stars were out this whole hike I was kind of picturing this would be a perfect loop I think for a group for a chill trip because there's so many stretches of really beautiful chill terrain where you could just be 
kind of gabbing and hanging out and talking and not really killing yourself and then get a little exercise on the up and downs and then you go back to the beautiful kind of relaxed spots have some good conversations and stuff and then end up at a spot like this i'm just gonna soak this view in one more time and i guess i'll put these feet back on the trail and start gradually heading back downhill and seeing if the jeep's still in the parking lot i suppose well here we go <laughs> of course i'm in that home stretch within a handful of miles carefully placed miles it's still some rocks and roots so i can't really fly through it too much but it's finally started to rain i knew i wasn't going to get out of this without some rain um also did i mention uh, i don't have any spare clothing so <laughs> If I get to the vehicle with wet clothing, uh, I will remain in those for the remainder of my four hour or so drive home. And it's picking up. I think, I think we're gonna go rain gear here. So, first things first, let's get the pack cover out, which in the case of the Gregory, this Gregory optic came with the pack cover, which kudos to them, because it's really nice to have one that you know is going to work specifically with your pack. So I got that there, and the rain gear. Now, I have found, when it comes to walking in the rain, that, here's my top, for the bottoms, even if there wasn't an issue, pardon me, even if there wasn't an issue of uh, overheating, I would want to keep my pant legs high like this, which with these outdoor vital pants is super easy because they have the little elastic bands to keep them up. Um, the reason for that is I found that a lot of times your pant leg will rest against the shoe as it's raining and it's going to wick up moisture. And even though you're wearing rain pants and trying your best not to overheat and sweat, nonetheless, all that water gets wicked up and by the end of your hike, you're soaked all the way up to your butt anyway so it's crazy i've had for years these disposable you'd almost call them frog togs or dry ducks uh rain suits and they're awesome and cheap they're like 20 bucks but i mean they're they're literally almost disposable like they'll snag on a tree and they don't really have any form fittingness to them or anything like that uh, no zippers for the legs all that stuff um and they're only two ounces less a piece than both of these. So that's pretty awesome. All right, get the cover on. Didn't quite beat the rain, but that's okay. We'll get there. Finally made it back. Full circle. It's about 3.30 going on 4 in the afternoon. Uh, second half of the day, I really started thinking I was going to get away with doing a trip without rain. But not quite. So, started getting dumped on. And it was a bit slippery and wet on the way out. And fogged in a little bit. So, maybe missed some views. But I was in some lower elevations at that point. Um... Hopefully you can hear me with the rain coming down right now, actually. But 
that about wraps it up. So three days, two nights on the old loggers path here in North Central PA. Um, I'll put trail descriptions, uh, links to GPS coordinates, and if you're interested in gear lists and all that stuff, I'll put that all in the video description below. But that's it. So right now I am starving. I have not eaten since that uh, breakfast up at that really cool view up there. And I'm just going to head out, wait till I can pick up some GPS signal from my phone and find somewhere to eat. So until next time, I'm Syntax77. And right now it's cheeseburger time.